Christ for family, the blood of Jesus. I believe that universe is filled with life, but I believe there's only one planet Earth. I believe there's only one place where Jesus became human whilst continuing to be God. And only one place where Jesus was the sacrificial lamb and shed his blood to purchase those who would believe in Christ in this earth. So God loves us and he wants to use us. A lot of, I should say a lot, parents that have businesses, you, you read uh, what, what they have to say, uh, whatever kind of business, be it, be it a multi-millionaire or a local store, where, wherever it is, they want, to, they want to leave it to their children, right? They want to see their children learn the business and, and, and maybe take it to the next level. They don't have to do that. Their kids aren't always the most qualified to take that business to the next level. They could hire somebody that's more qualified, but they don't love everybody. They love their children. They want to see that in the hands of their children. So God can get somebody more qualified. It's called an angel. But he wants to leave it to his kids. So he's involved us in the plan of salvation. That's why the Bible, the Apostle Paul told the Corinthian church, you're Christ in the earth. You're his mouth. You're his hands. You're his feet. Whoever sins you, 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 you remit, they're remitted. That doesn't mean like the Catholics think that the, the priest has, has the power to forgive sin. No, that's just given us after we tell the person about Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation and repentance. We have the authority to tell them that if they believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and receive him as Lord and Savior, we have the authority to say, well, under those terms, you, I can tell you that you are saved according to the authority of the word of God. He uses us in His plan of salvation. Amen. So, He wants to be involved. But He also wants us to be involved in His business. His business. God is a good God. God is good? All the time. All the time? Oh, I like that. That's a new, the new, new trick I found. Copy from hand. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Now, most of the work, we're talking about that God uh, wants to use us. Now, most of the work of the kingdom is done by the people in the pew. We know that. Most of the good things that happen in the world concerning the gospel, concerning God's plan of salvation, is done by you guys. How many of you versus one, one preacher, let's say. Let's just say how many to, to one. So you can do a whole lot more than one person can do. So most of the work is done, I don't care how big the church, most of the work is done by the people. Right? right? Yeah. Yet most of the credit uh, goes to the people in the pulpit. That's just the unfortunate way. The people do most of the work, but most of the credit for having done all these wonderful things, uh, the credit and the thanks and everything, goes to the person in the pulpit. That's not right. And some of the some guys in the pulpit like it. Yeah. You see, and then they'll write a book, the ten steps, so you can <laughs> attain to what I attain. And then and then uh, it's just not that way. I like when they just throw it back. Don't you like when they have a runner or something uh, wins a medal or wins something, and they give credit to the rest of the team? Yes. You could be the best running back in football there ever was. But if you don't have the linemen uh, punching those holes in there and making it easy for you, I remember, I won't say names, but I remember some, some, uh, some of the great athletes questioned about that. They said, oh, it wasn't me so much, man. It was the line. Yeah. And then they named certain guys. They, they said, you could, the, the, that hole wasn't open long, but it was all, all I had to do was jump through it. And then the other guy was already waiting for me. So they give the credit to the line. So some preachers have to learn that. I think most preachers understand it, but some have to learn that. Now, although most of the credit for what the people uh, do goes to the preachers, uh, sometimes most of the blame goes to the preachers too. So the preachers get, can get the credit, but they can get the blame. When something happens bad in the church, guess who gets the blame? It's called the pulpit. Yeah, the preacher gets the blame. Uh, just like he gets the credit, he gets the blame. So you have to be a, you have to be careful how you handle both. Let me talk about uh, all of that that I just shared has to do with it. I want to encourage you that God's a good God, and His pleasure is to to use you, to be with you. Remember, 
the Bible says in the book of Genesis that God would come in the cool of the day to speak to Adam. God would get up off his throne. You know, he's, a, he's omnipresent. He's, he's, he's everywhere at once. But when the Bible uses the word with a capital V, very, V-E-R-Y, his very presence, that means he's actually there. Not just everywhere at once, but now he's actually there. So God, the Father, probably the pre-incarnate Christ too, would come just to fellowship with Adam, with his creation. And the Bible says in the cool of the day. Wow. Well, who's going to go out the universe? Don't worry about it. I got an autopilot. God must have autopilot. He just puts it on autopilot, and he, I, I, I got to spend time with my man, Adam. Okay, Adam. So uh, he would spend time with Adam. He just loved it. Just loved it. So he wants to spend time with you. He loves you just as much as he loved Adam. I like that about God. He doesn't play favorites. Okay, he, he just doesn't. So, having said all that to encourage you, uh, let me just throw this in a little bit. Now, believers are sometimes discouraged when, when they faithfully labored for God. We're talking about working for God. Some believers have faithfully, okay, they've done it for, they've been consistent, and they've done everything that they could in the ministry of the Lord. They've lived for the Lord. And, uh, and it just seems as if God isn't even aware of it. So he's like, Lord, Lord, you know, how come brother so-and-so, you know, he got, he, why is he so blessed? I've done this just as long as him, and I'm not trying to complain, but I just see he's blessed, I'm not. How come sister so-and-so seems so blessed, and I'm not? And uh, God has his reasons. And he doesn't have to tell you or me about it. Amen. There are many, many reasons. I think a lot of times, from what little I know, either from the Word of God or by talking to people over the years, sometimes people don't even know why. And then when they, when they actually find out if the Lord showed them an area, they were not aware of it. Some of them were aware of it and just kept pushing it in the back. So... Why doesn't the Lord bless me the way he's blessing them? That can be discouraged. Some people, because of that, they're tempted to slow down in their work for God. If you, maybe you've known people, maybe yourself, where you've been on fire for God and you've labored and labored and you've done so many things you've gone out of your way to do for the Lord. And it seems like God hasn't blessed what I've done. And of course, the, the, the enemy, who, who also has a kingdom, mm -hmm. and he's got demons, they case you up. They have an intelligence team, just like the military. And they'll lie to you, start lying to your mind. Well, God's not that concerned for you. And, and after a while, you get discouraged. And I'm not saying you turn your back on God. I'm not talking about that. But you get discouraged. Some people just don't do. They're not on fire anymore. They lost the fire of God. See, they have fallen into a trap based on reward. Rewards work. Yeah. But they're expecting, because they heard brother so-and-so on the TV, or they got his tape, or they got something. Mm -hmm. And if you do this and that, you're going to get these wonderful results. Yeah. So you have a preconceit in your mind about what results you want and expect. And it doesn't happen, you get discouraged. So the, the fire is not burning as bright as it was. And you're just not doing as much for God as you were. You're not as interested in doing the stuff you were doing. What happened? Discouragement happened. Yeah. But God sees it all. God sees it all. He's watching you. Yeah. You know who I think pleases God the most? In my opinion, humble opinion. And I'm probably wrong, but this is what I believe. The people that bless God the most are the ones that are working for God. Don't, appear, don't seem to have the, the blessing that others told them that they should have, but they continue no matter what. Amen. No matter what. Yes. I'm not doing it for the, for the blessing. Right. I'm not doing it for the hundredfold return. Amen. You take the hundredfold return. Yes, I, don't, I don't need a return. That's it. 
I'm just, I'm just so grateful that I'm saved. I'm so grateful that I'm born again. I'm so grateful that I'm missing. I'm going to miss hell and make heaven. I'm grateful. Thank you, Lord. And, and people like that, I think they thrill the heart of God. And there are people that will go to heaven without having experienced all these blessings that Brother Big promised. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people will experience it, but a whole lot won't. Mm -hmm. If you live in a third world nation out there where there's hardly any food, to, there are Christians in North Korea that have died and are dying today because of hunger. Yeah. Yes. Well, why doesn't God feed them? He can. He could have manna fall down from heaven to feed them. Of course he can. Yes, he can. Does he love them? Yes, yes he does. does he, is there a church there, a, a real born again church? Yes. I don't know why God allows some of what He allows. But I tell you what, for those that will stay with the Lord, great is their reward one day. One, one day. Great is their reward. So, my heart is saddened when I see believers not just slow down in their work for the Lord, but uh, some have just given up working for the Lord. I didn't say they've given up on God. I'm not talking about their salvation. But some have just given up working for the Lord. I've had people tell me, I'm kind of burnt out. You burn out. Burn out. Yeah. Don't say that to God. Yeah. Don't tell God that you burn out. What is it? First Corinthians, uh, what is that? 10? Uh, no man, let no man say when he's tempted. No, that's, that's James chapter 1. There's no temptation taking you such as is not common to man, but God with the temptation will provide a way of escape that you'll be able to bear. 1 Corinthians 10 something. Uh, God will always provide a way that you can bear up under a test or a trial. A way. Not a way out of the test. That's misunderstanding what that's saying. That's not, not a way out, but He'll provide the ability, the strengthening, so you could bear up under the test. That's what that's saying. <laughs> so for those that have given up, they have to come back to the foot of the cross. Amen. Have another little talk with Jesus, like the old song says. Amen. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. Spend more time. Seek the Lord and, and you'll find Him. If you seek Him, you'll find Him. If you don't seek Him, He's never left, but that, that fellowship that you had with him is kind of damaged. And you'll never be happy. And you're in a dangerous place because the next step is just turning your back. And I know people that have done that. But that's not the, that's not the majority. The majority are just discouraged. So I want to encourage you. By the way, that was my uh, opening remarks. Oh, yeah. That was my introduction. I was just planning to talk for 30 minutes today. How many believe that? Yeah. More, more. <clears throat> okay, Hebrews 6, 7, please. I want to share a principle, and this is fast. It's a principle from God's Word, and uh, I hope and pray that this will bless and encourage you from God's Word. So we're going to talk right out of God's Word. Hebrews chapter 6. I think uh, we're going to put it up on the screen. I don't know if I gave them the... The verse, I probably didn't give him the verse. Hebrews 6, 7. All right, Susan could type fast. Are you ready? I want to share, I want to read this verse and I want to share a principle that's consistent in the Word of God, but this, this verse just kind of hits the nail on the head. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated, receives blessing from God. I'm going to read it again, and then we're going to put it into secular English. For the earth, God is, is uh, the writer of the Hebrews here, is, is sharing a spiritual truth, and as God oftentimes did, he would use natural things to explain spiritual truth. So you can say, as the earth. For the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. Now let me share the principle with you. When land that has been watered and cultivated bears food for the farmers who work it, 
God blesses it because it is productive land. So God blesses the land. I'll read that principle again. When land, we're talking about land. When land that has been watered and cultivated bears food for the farmers who work it, God blesses it because it is productive land. So what is this principle saying to you and to me? Why is it there? It's this. It's saying this. Those who have heard and received the gospel message, are you listening? Yes. That's, that's all Christians, if they're, if they're Christians. Those who have heard and received the gospel message and, and are doing something with it. That's the difference. A lot of the body of Christ, all of the body of Christ, has heard the gospel, the true gospel, and received it, believed it and received it. All, all Christians, if you didn't receive it, you're not saved. Yes. What's the gospel? Man was lost and separated from God and on his way to a hell. God sent forth his son, Jesus Christ. Okay? To pay the price so man's sins could be forgiven. He was God's sacrificial lamb. He went to a cross, paid for the price, 